Hey, what is up you guys? Always good to see you here on the channel. Y'all know something? It is really hard to meditate with mosquitoes. So uh, we're out here on a beautiful Saturday morning. It's actually a little bit cooler than it has been lately. It's been just crazy hot. If you watched any of the most recent videos, I mean, we've been like 110, 105 heat indexes. It has just been almost unbearable. But we've got a nice morning out here today, and um, we're sitting out here just trying to meditate a little bit. I'm, you know, I really lately, with everything going on in my personal life and um, just life in general, it's so busy. It gets so busy to the point to where, you know, it's just like it's overwhelming. I know I use that word a lot, but it really is. So I'm going to try to slow down in life in general and just enjoy the nature and uh, make videos for you guys at the same time. But I was trying to meditate out here this morning. I'm just looking out over the pond and uh, got a nice breeze blowing. It's just really peaceful and tranquil until the mosquitoes show up. And yes, Diane, I know I'm supposed to be taking vitamin B, what, B12, I think you told me. I just haven't done it because well, I've been too busy to get to the store and buy any. And I say it like that because as I get older, I realize that more and more we use that excuse. I'm too busy. I'm too busy to do this, to spend time with more time with my parents, to do things I wanna do. And it's really a shame the world we live in now is just wide open. And I used to feed off of it. You know, when I was building the couple of businesses that we, um, we still run today, you know, I fed off of that stress and that drive and just being busy all the time. But now as I'm getting older, so I'm 42 now, I just feel stressed all the time. And I don't like it. And uh, there's no really like easy way to turn everything off, but I'm going to try through meditation and gardening but gardening responsibly and not taking on these big, huge projects that, uh, that I can't keep up with and then I feel defeated because they get full of weeds or you know, harvest wasn't as great as it should have been. So, you know, I'm gonna try to just take a step back, I guess, and really just kind of focus on what I want out of life and what I want, what I want to do and see if I can just incorporate more of that into my daily routine versus all the stuff that I feel that I have to do. And a lot of those things too, I think that I'm thinking I have to do, you know, maybe they're not an absolute necessity, but just through who I am as a person, I've always put so many have to do things on my list or else I don't feel accomplished. And so I'm gonna just try to do a little bit of change and uh, back up and punt kinda, kinda sorta. So um, I don't know, and also with my channel in general, I kind of want to do a more vlog style video presentation with you guys. So I uh, read some of your comments this morning and y'all know I always appreciate when y'all leave comments. So let me know what you think about this idea, you know, with the future evolving, as the channel evolves, you know, what do you think about a more vlog style uh, video presentation, if you will? Still gonna give great gardening content or try to give great gardening content but just um just be able to share a little bit more of my life and what's going on with me with you guys and then of course i love it when y'all share what's happening in your lives with me as well so um we'll see how it goes but we do have some fun stuff planned today um and it's need to do but it's also going to be fun to do so i've got a beehive over at uh, the sand mine in beach island atomic sand uh, where I shot the video the other day for that aquatic plant, that red, red stem thalia. So we're going to go over there and rob that beehive, get us some good local honey for sale down at Grassroots at the nursery because we're getting a little bit low. We've got to feed the birds and the aviary first. And I think I'm going to wash my truck. That's not a need to do, but uh, it sure would look better and make me feel better. So we're going to go around here in a minute, get the birds fed up, give our truck a little little rinse off 
And then head over to Atomic Sand and mess with those damn mean bees. They are the Russian variety and they're good honey producers and they're very, um, they're very tough and they don't succumb to a lot of pest problems that some of my other beehives have succumbed to and vanished. So they're a great bee, but damn, they are some kind of mean. But that'll be a fun day. Then we're gonna go up to Dad's house, spend a little time with him. Uh, my dad was a beekeeper as I was little, and that's kind of what got me into it. But we're gonna go spend a little time with him, maybe drink some honey moonshine this afternoon and see if we can't get this honey processed. But I think right now, I'm gonna sit out here and enjoy this view for just a little bit longer. Um, and maybe the mosquitoes will leave me alone long enough to meditate a little bit more, kind of clear my head, and then uh, let's go get this day started and, uh, and have some fun. Got him. And of course, we got to eat too, right guys? So Luis brought us some organic chicken eggs from his farm and I got some Duke's mayonnaise of course some Frank's red hot and yes that is a hot dog bun because well times are hard folks and I kind of forgot bread at the grocery store the other day. I like to give the guys out here Larry and Scarlett and the other birds as much fresh fruit and veggies as I can. They get a good seed diet and nuts and stuff like that but I just think that fruit and veggies are important to keeping them healthy too. All right, there we go. I'm inside eating a daggum egg sandwich on a hot dog bun, and these guys are living the five-star resort life. But I got them some oranges, some apples, some grapes, and some lettuce, and now we'll give them their seed mix as well as their fruit and veggies, and they'll be good to go till tomorrow. So we'll take their fruit mix, and for those of you who have birds and were curious, this is the seed blend that I use. It's actually a couple different brands just kind of mixed together, but got all kind of nuts, banana chips, sunflower seed, of course, um, just a conglomeration. And then each bird, Larry, behave. Larry hates the, uh, the spoon that I used to feed him with. But each bird gets about a cup of food a day, right, Larry? That's right. Don't you bite me. All right, there you go, buddy. Hey, Miss Scarlet. How you doing today, girl? And then Miss Scarlet over here, I usually keep her nuts and seed mix separate, and then I'll put her fruit in that one. There you go, darling. There's you some fresh veggies and fruit. How are you doing today? I know you're not gonna talk because you're on camera, but you look like you're doing pretty good. You're a pretty girl, you know that? And then the pair we have out here in the aviary, this is Kona, he's a Catalina macaw just like Larry is. And then Millie is a Millie Gold macaw. They're both hybrids, but they're, uh, they're bonded pair, so they will bite the crap out of me. So I have to be real careful when feeding them. All right, here's your food. I kind of have to duck down, get in there real quick, because this guy right here, hates me, don't you? I don't know why you hate me. I bring you food every day. You live in a paradise. Why can't you just be nice, dude? Well, I had to sneeze, Kona. There's just some more fruit, buddy. I like to put their fruit in different places. This helps them kind of go around and forage for it, make it feel more natural to them. What you think? Is that good? Is it good? And for all you bird folks out there, something else I like to give my birds is these little rocks. I just grab them from the walkway, wash them with some uh, soap, and they use them to like shape their beaks and they love them. I learned this when I had Scarlet out one day and she grabbed a rock and just started like moving it around in her beak. And uh, then I read and they use them to actually keep their beak, you know, kind of like cutting your fingernails, kind of sort of. Here you go, Scarlet. Get you a rock. Come on, there you go. And see, then she'll just take it and kind of use it like a file to uh, keep her beak the way she wants it for opening nuts and stuff like that. 
pretty neat. I didn't know about it until, like I said, she just picked one up in the yard one day and started going to work with it. It's kind of neat, huh? I had no idea, but then I read about it on the internet and other people are doing it too. It's just uh, their kind of natural way to keep their beak in check. This is kind of neat, you guys. I brought these home from the lab the other day. This is a Monstera that we did in tissue culture. I'm going to pot it up uh, here sometime soon. And then a pink princess that I did also in tissue culture. Just kind of screwing around, playing, playing around a bit, just trying to figure out how to grow this stuff in the lab. But we kind of successfully have two plants at least that made it. Now that we've got the birds fed and watered, we're going to water the greenhouse out here, which is super easy and fun. Much easier than watering the house plants inside, if you guys saw that video the other day. Uh, then we're going to go outside, try to wash our truck a little bit, and then we're going to go rob some bees, bring the honey back, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good harvest there. Get that in buckets, let it settle, and uh, we'll have some more honey for sale down at Grassroots. Well, we got our truck rinsed off and we are about to pull into atomic sand over here in Beach Island. And I'm not looking super forward to this because we got to put the big old bee suit on and it is 94 degrees outside. So I'll try to knock this out real quick, as quick as possible and get on back and uh, go ahead and start extracting honey today. I believe we'll have time to do it or at least get started. So. Ah, hope y'all are in the air conditioner somewhere because I'm sure enough going to be wishing I was here in just a few minutes. Well, here we are, folks. We just pulled in the gate, and these are the two hives that I have out here. That one doesn't have any honey in it, but this guy has done really good. And uh, Luis, the friend, that, you know, friend of mine and guy that worked for me, checked this one. And I believe that second box from the bottom is the one that he said all the honey is in so there's a lot of bees and they about to get angry so i'm going to throw this suit on and uh, try to get in and out of here as quickly as i can i'll do the best i can to film for you and halfway narrate but it's going to be hot busy by myself so i'll just do the best that i can and now to add insult to injury as hot as it is we got to build us a little fire this will aid as uh help calm the bees down We'll put in that little smoker right there, and this will cover up all the alarm scents that they're going to start sending out, or at least try to cover them up so they don't freak out too bad. <laughs> oh, man, I may not put this part in the video, but anything to keep sweat out of my eyes. I don't care if I look like Jane Fonda from her workout video. It's going to be hot inside this suit. I got to put a little bit of this honey banded on. This will just, it's got some all natural chemicals that make the bees want to get out of the hive. I don't want to use too much of it. Maybe something like about that right there. Now, let's go piss off some bees. Then we're going to take this top lid off. And we'll try to do this with you guys in my hands. There we go. Top lid's coming off. And then we take this inner lid. I need my bucket of tools. Here's my bucket of tools. We need our little hive tools so we can pry this top lid off. And we're going to set the uh, honey bandit coated one down on there and it should run them all out. I'll tell you what, we probably could go ahead and remove a couple of these supers and get on down to where we need to get down to because it'll take a while to run them out with that honey bandit way up here on top. As I'm removing the supers you can see down in there these lower supers 
have got a good bit of honey. We might take one or two of these supers depending on how much honey is under this one. All right, I'll try to explain a little bit. So these supers are just honey, extra honey storage. And there is one box I think we're gonna take. The other three we're gonna leave for winter food for the bees. But this is the box that we want right here. You can see down in there, it is just slap fulls. So that box is gonna be really heavy, but we gotta try to get the bees out of there first. So we're gonna take our honey bandit board when I find it right here. We're going to place it on top with the corners showing just a little bit so the air will flow through there, carry that all natural chemical down, and we should see them start coming out of here in just a little bit. Man, it is a thousand degrees in this bee seat right now. So if you think you want to be a beekeeper, it's fun, it's great, I encourage you, but just know you're going to sweat like a lot. And you see now we've driven all the bees or the majority of the bees down into the bottom. This is where the queen is and lays all the babies. But I gotta get this hive stacked back up and we gotta try to get out of here because they are getting pretty pissed off right now. And we have got some sure enough pissed off bees right now. I got the hive put back together over there. These two boxes are the ones that have our honey. So what I'm gonna do is take my leaf blower. We're gonna blow them off the top. We're gonna to put that chemical back on it and hopefully they're gonna take off and go back to the hive so that we don't steal any worker bees with us when we leave. And what I need to do is get this super on top of here. But I don't wanna smash anybody. And then they really do set off an alarm. Sometimes it's inevitable just because there's so many bees. Oh my God, that's heavy. Holy crap. Oh. Whoa. All right. Let's get that on there. Then I don't mean to take the trash bag with us. Boy, it is hot, guys. We're gonna put this on top. Give that a few minutes. And hopefully they will all run out the bottom here. Got to give them room to do so. Crack this corners a little bit. Let some airflow get under there and let that chemical do its thing and make sure all of our honey doesn't fall off. That would be a nightmare. With the assistance of a little bit of smoke and that chemical, Majority of them are booking it out of there and taking off and they'll go back to the hive where they belong and then we can take our cut of the honey. We left them plenty enough for winter and uh, that one has got plenty of honey in it too. If you rob it all, then they could have trouble surviving during the winter. The honey is their, that's their root cellar. That's their food storage for when it gets cold. And if you take everything then you have to supplement with sugar water and a bunch of stuff and it's their honey i'm just stealing a little bit of it but i'm going to make sure they have enough to live through the winter and then we'll do it all over again next year all right we're gonna to have to go drive away a little bit you guys because the bees are super pissed off still got a couple hanging around the boxes but we're just kind of hope we don't have any on our butt right now so when we sit down in the truck they don't sting us we're going to drive a little distance to kind of give them the uh the space they need to realize hey this honey ain't coming back and we need to fly on off and abandon ship so we're going to just drive maybe a couple of 100 feet here and uh see if we can't get rid of the rest of them then we'll head home it is some kind of hot though man good graciousness Well, we finally made it up here to mom and dad's house. Dad had to go inside and wash up the little electric knife we're gonna use in a second. 
But uh, it's been a pretty fun day, man. I tell you, those, uh, those bees are that come mean, and that suit was hot. But we finally made it back up here to the little garage, and as soon as Dad gets it back around here, we're going to take that knife. I'm going to have to suit up one more time because uh, we, we did bring some bees back with us. So I'm going to suit up one more time, take the frames out of the box, blow them off with the blower, and we're going to take that hot electric knife and um, saw the caps off. We're going to put it in the slinger that I'm going to show you guys in a minute, and we're going to make some honey. And when I said slinger a while ago, guys, this is the slinger. So what we do is put the frames down in here in those baskets. And then we turn this handle right here. This slides up on there just like that. And once you give that a couple of turns, it just slings the honey out with centrifugal force. It goes in this big vat here. So once this is full, we'll open up this valve. We'll go into one of our buckets, but it's going to go through a strainer first that'll screen out any debris that might make it into it and then once it goes into the buckets we'll let it set for a little day you know for a few days and if we want to we'll go into a separate bucket and then we can go into the jars we got all of our stainless stuff washed up dad uses this um, little piece of wood right here with this nail in it to set the frame on we've got our knife heating up I got my main man out here with me we've got us some uh, moonshine that I found up in Lexington the other day. And I, Dad, I just think that uh, you know, it's only fitting. We're doing honey. We're going to drink a little bit. <laughs> yeah, honey. We, we need to drink a little honey, honey moonshine. But that stuff right there is really, really good. Again, that's a distillery up in Lexington, yeah, that's South good, Carolina. Man. Let's put it, up, put it up close to me. Yeah, put it, yeah, put it beside me. I've got me a cold beer. It has been some kind of hot today. That suit was so hot today, Dad. I'm trying to tell you what. Do you think we should go ahead and pour us one? Well, that would be fitting for the, at the beginning. Yes, you always do that. I think just a ceremonial uh, shot would be called for yeah. because i got to go put that suit on and go back there and fight the bees and bring some frames of honey around here. we got we got a cheers to the... To the yeah, honey, honey first, right? That's good, man. It is. It's got the, thing about honey, it. the honey aftertone to it. Mm -hmm. That's right. You don't need a chaser with it, you know? Yeah. All right, All right. you ready? Yep, I'm going to go around here and suit up. And I'm going to start bringing you some frames. Nope, I won't. That's... All right, guys, I'm gonna show you all the process here. And then we're gonna to have to get to work. We'll be losing light. And we'll put uh, that on a nail. Put that on a nail right there that Dad's got. He's got his hot knife right there, and then he's gonna cut the caps off. So he'll this, take knife, that knife. this knife fits all the way across. So what you do is just slide it gently up through there, back and forth, just like a knife. Now, some of them aren't filled out quite enough, so you have to go back and open the caps up. But right now we're going to do what we can do. And if we got some more that's really full, which would yeah. give you a great video. Yeah, we do have like, look at this guy right here. Look how oh, full yeah. that dude is. That, so. would, <laughs> that would be cool. But right, so go ahead and do what you're doing. Cause I mean, what I got to do is, and cause the cap, cause just aren't, the caps aren't, the honey is not filled all the way out. Right. So we just got to break those caps and then when it goes in the slinger, all that honey is just going to sling right out of all those cells on both sides. It'll go up against the walls of the stainless steel barrel here and then drain down to the bottom and then we'll filter it. Real thin, okay? Okay. But if we don't, we put all the honey in the bucket. And we don't want that, so I'm going to ease up through that. As you notice, the blade is not even on the wood. I'm just right. skimming across the top. Slowly but surely. Look at that cake, honey. That is beautiful. Can you imagine how many hours they worked to get that, honey? A bunch. Got to come back in there a little bit 
and, yeah. and like that one was recessed in there a little bit. So now you just got to come in there with the tip yep. of your knife, open those caps up, and we're going to have us a bunch of honey sure enough, man. Well guys, it's been fun hanging out with y'all today, but we're losing light, the sun's going down, me and dad are gonna try to sling a few more frames of honey and then we'll do the bottling process a little bit later on, but it's gonna be too dark to film here soon, so I appreciate you very much. Try to hit that like and subscribe down there for us and uh, you follow along on all of our crazy adventures and remember, the more you know, the more you grow. We'll see you on the next video and I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great day guys.